CSP is the culmination of 50 years of research, entrepreneurship, and um, academic innovations. The department creates educational and research activity aimed at a sustainable earth system and still with a prosperous economy. So how do we do that? We, we, have, we train our students in an interdisciplinary uh, training that combines the social science and the natural science. So they get an horizontal approach of every issues and we integrate that into three degrees that we propose in the program. We propose a Master of Science, a Master of Environmental Management and a PhD. The graduate program has been designed to provide an integrated and creative learning environment that fosters intellectual growth, critical thinking and practical engagement in research and sustainable management of earth and resources. Our faculty do research on topics that are related to earth systems and the sustainability of earth system. And we have research on the glaciology and water resources. We have faculty working on environmental and natural economics, on environmental science and policy, on climate change and the impact of climate change on the hydrology, and the optical oceanography using remote sensing. Uh, in the aquatic environment. We have also faculty working on uh, renewable energy, the biomass side of it, and also on uh, ecosystem, forest ecosystems. I examine different methods we use to translate environmental science into the policy process and how we communicate it with society. Over the past 10 years, I have conducted a series of surveys with uh, local officials across the Great Plains states. And I asked them, are they concerned about climate change? And if so, what is their office doing to address it? A little less than half of the survey respondents were concerned about climate change at the time. And less than 20% had developed any policies to address mitigation or adaptation. But one respondent really highlighted an important component that changed my research. The more we argue about who causes climate change or what causes it, we're wasting time and energy because the public will continue to struggle to understand the complexities. They really highlight the factor that framing climate change is just as important as looking at the science of what's causing it and how to change that. One real world issue now is the devil's stick flooding. And this devil's flooding is, is not only water and also about water quality. And so we involve the student, conduct multidisciplinary research, we collect water sample in the lab, we analyze water sample for water pollution, and we conduct modeling so to simulate how this water would respond to climate change. And also we did additional research like in policy. What the policy would, should be implemented to mitigate this with a minimal environmental effect. And also we conduct economic analysis to see what the current measures in mitigating this Devil's Lake flooding, do they make economic sense? Or if it doesn't make sense, what could be the alternative? Even though we use geospatial data to conduct uh, the research on the glaciers to give us a broader sense of the changes that are occurring in, in a larger region, it's still important to get into the field because the geospatial data, the imagery and, or the digital elevation models can't necessarily provide all of the information that we need to understand what's happening with the glacier and how it's impacting and being impacted by the environment. We absolutely get students involved in our research. We find that it's really important to bring students into the field. There are a number of things that need to be done, the ice radar, the GPS, the stream flow, so there's a number of people that need to be involved in this research. Being in the field for them really gives them a sense as to what is actually happening out in the real world. I teach environmental economics and their ecological economics across all campus, um, both in undergraduate and graduate classes. And that attracts many students from different fields, including biology, geography, political science, language, as well as students from engineering school. I think it's very important for them to um, be able to use economic way of thinking to analyze those environmental issues and uh, help them to understand 
understand what exactly caused those environmental issues and how the policy can correct those um, uh, mechanism to um, incentivize people to make sustainable and good decision makings. We ideally are looking for people that are able to think in interdisciplinary ways. Galileo was not the first person to point a telescope at the moon. That honor goes to an individual that was in England. And he took the telescope and he pointed it at the moon and he made a sketch of it and he described it as a perfect sphere. But when Galileo pointed his telescope at the moon, he saw mountains and craters. He saw this really varied world. And it was because of the, the environment that Galileo was living in at the time. So that diversity of experience that he had because of his environment allowed him to make a critical insight about the moon when he saw it. That for me is the most important thing for students, to bring what they know about the world and apply it to different fields.